I've made a multitude of videos about my network attached storage servers, mostly provided by Synology and Western Digital as part of an ongoing sponsorship to help make sure my business stays afloat data wise. On my main archive NAS, I have my active projects that I edit from on a 10 gigabit network setup NAS, but on the other NAS, I have my archives, things of projects I've already finished, my already uploaded files, things like that. I got to the point where I had less than two terabytes free on the NAS, which may seem like a lot of space for a lot of people, but some day-to-day -day projects can take up as much as 500 gigs to even a terabyte per project. I needed a way to slim down on the data. Thanks to Western Digital for sponsoring this NAS build and my overall storage solutions with their WD Red 6 terabyte network storage drives, which are made to last for a very long time with constant uptime and keep your data safe, and they still deliver it fast over the network from your storage solution. Check WD out via the link in the video description. Some projects, which I knew were that way in the first place, like my OBS master class that I made last year, the entire project folder had about 24 hours worth of footage and took up eight terabytes, eight terabytes on the storage server. I needed to change. I'd mess around with running handbrake on my, on my Plex server, trying to compress the footage, but it was going to require too much manual interaction and take up too much time. And I, Post 1.0, I've never really had a good time getting handbrake settings nailed right. Like it's too obnoxious to actually choose a profile. Like the profile doesn't apply half the time. I've had some weird issues. So with the help of some people from our Discord server, which you can go to eposvox.com slash Discord to join with us and talk about stuff like this, uh, we, I put together with the help of plenty of people on the server, if I'm honest, a custom FFmpeg script. That's a batch file that runs FFmpeg on any set uh file extensions for videos, and I had specific ones. I left out specific ones that I knew would not compress well at all, such as MTS from one of my camcorders. I'll touch on that in a moment. And basically it has a recursive action to go through any file in the folder that matches that extension and compress it one at a time with a constant rate factor, CRF of 14. This is another way of measuring quality instead of using bitrate or anything like that. CRF 14 in most cases is almost visually lossless where the Compressed file will look just as good as the original file to the eye, but clears up a lot of space depending on the file. Now, as I mentioned, this doesn't work on everything. The highest gains that I sought to get out of this compression were on screen capture and files from like 2016 or early 2017 where I was converting everything to Cineform, which is a big, nearly lossless codec, but takes up a ton of space. And then similarly, the ProRes and DNX files that I had recorded on my Atomos Ninja Inferno, which were huge file sizes, but a lot of them were screen capture stuff that did not need that much data, and even the camera footage on the Ninja Inferno would compress better. I am a control freak, however, so there is still some more automation that could be done here. For example, I went folder by folder because I couldn't just leave it running the whole time my computer would shut off at some point or whatever. Uh, I went folder by folder you know, year by year from 2015 up to 2017 or through 2017 and did it folder by folder. And then I compared the bigger file against the smaller file, whichever of the two files were bigger. I deleted these, I deleted the bigger one because in some cases, like with my 4k camera footage, the com compressed file running through that encoding would actually wind up larger than the original just due to how the encoding works. So I got the highest gains out of OBS screen captures and Cineform and ProRes. And next, my T3i footage, my old camera that I used to use at 1080p30, that compression actually fairly regularly got the file size quite a bit down. If you wanted to automate it, you could probably add in some script. You might need to use PowerShell instead of Batch, uh, but you could probably write in an aspect of the script that actually compares the newly created file to the older one and deletes whichever is bigger automatically. Again, I'm a little bit too much of a control freak for that. Other footage, however, like from my 4K cameras, my Panasonic G7s, and my 1080p60 camcorder did not compress well. So for the camcorder, I just excluded the MTS file type that it used altogether, but my camera footage was MP4, like most of my footage in general. So for that, I just had to go through and delete the files. It took a few weeks once I finally got it going to stick with it and really get it going. But man, this one little script saved me so much space on that NAS. I went from less than two terabytes free and keep in mind the entire time i'm doing this over the course of a few weeks multiple weeks i was adding completed projects that i finished along the way back to the nas i went from less than two terabytes free to almost 14 terabytes free 
and most of that, I mean, a lot of that came from the OBS masterclass, because it was all recorded pretty much on my Ninja Inferno, which were huge file sizes, and most of it was footage of OBS, which could be compressed a whole heck of a, heck of a lot, because 2D screen capture stuff compresses really well. And so I have almost 14 terabytes free, and that 8 terabyte OBS folder is now 956 gigabytes. Obviously, this is something that has a very specific use case, but one that I was super excited to have finally gotten done and that I will regularly run on new projects to keep the space tight. Just wanted to share with you. It it saved my storage situation for the time being. Eventually, I will fill it back up and that will be a problem. But that's a problem for 13.71 terabytes from now. <laughs> uh, code and everything from the script will be in the description down below. I also set it up with my Elgato, uh, with my Elgato Stream Deck. So that I'll ha I have a folders icon and then I click CRF 14 and it uses, I have an auto hotkey script that grabs the uh, directory from the window title and then runs the script within the currently open folder, assuming I have an explorer window selected, which saves me a lot of time and makes it very easy by just hitting a button on the stream deck. Now, since everything is over the network, there was a lot of issues with UNC paths and things like that had to use a lot of very specific quotes so pay attention if you're copying that from the audio hotkey script or the batch folder quote placement matters a lot and there are still some folders whose names are too long for it to do and so it'll cut it off and then say that folder is not found and so i'd have to temporarily rename that folder to something short run the script and then rename it back minor annoyance could probably be worked around or if you just want to use drive letters in the first place instead of network paths you'd save yourself a lot of headache like I said, code will be in the description down below. Down there, hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education and weird things like this, and I'll see you in the next one.